Hello everybody, welcome to this new episode. In today's video, I would like to follow up on prior video in which I explain how to uh, set up the SQL database in your Java application. So what I want to do today is um, pretty much combine um, the tutorial on getting started with Java desktop application and the recent, most recent uh, tutorial that I created on how to integrate it SQL database. So I will um, start from the project, as I said, uh, in which I connect to the SQL database and display a bunch of ID, IDs, uh, rows, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going in the same project, I will, I will, I will, go to, uh, I will create an order and that will be from the window builder, swing window, is another application window. I will call it Mozambique, <coughs> which is the name of the database that I'm triggering. If we go into the design, design uh, view, we will be presented with a blank page. I would like to click on it, probably give it a title and expand the window <coughs> a little bit. So um, I'm not going to um, print here all the fields of the database because that will be uh, time consuming to for the demonstration, so I will choose I will I will choose only four uh, columns of this uh, database. So I'll, the way I am going to present this data from the database is in a table. So the first thing that we do is from the layouts section, I'm going to click on absolute layout and click on the canvas. Once it's done. I come back into components and I look for the table. Here's the table. Click once and expand across the canvas. Let me just shrink this a little bit and make it fill in the whole uh, area. So then we got the table in which we are going to uh, print the data from this SQLite database. Now I need to work upon the model. <coughs> so selecting the table here in our components, we can go in and click on the model. You see the model is highlighted here. So we go uh, to the right, there are three dots here. Just click on these three dots and this will and give us the opportunity to work upon the model. Columns, how many columns do I want? I want four columns. And as for the rows, rows I want at least 33 rows, but for now I just will put one. Um, sorry, here under it says rows, I will put one because I don't want to, to see the whole uh, I will do that programmatically later on. So we see here our model. If I run this application, it will pop up on top of my screen. Now we see that we have one, two, three, four, five columns. That is not really what I want. It says five. That's not a problem. We can uh, modify it that from inside from the source code so down below here to the left we can access the source code and here I can modify my model as I see fit first thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to refer to what I want to do I want to create a data structure a data model which contains 33 rows and 4 columns those are the four columns that I want to have. So let me just copy this and paste it somewhere. 
so that I don't need to keep on looking at this part something like that so okay anyways um, so the names of my columns will be the first column will be named date the second column I will call type the third column I will call desk the fourth column I will call total and my fifth column there will be a fifth column so I just uh, delete that column and as for the object model it should have only uh, four columns here in the object part one, two, three, four, it has five, uh, five. so I delete one. <coughs> so far so good, so what we need now is a way to construct this object that we are injecting here, construct it in another area, in another part of my application, and, and just inject it here differently. So, I'm going back into my. I'm going to bring this. No, actually, I'm going back into my. This is the type of object that I need to have another class uh, returned to populate here. So I'm going back to my queries page, which I have my queries class, and I'm going to duplicate um, this method that we already work on. On. So this method, um, as opposed to the one that we did before, this one will not be a void method, will return to this type of object. And I will call this um, field table, just like that. It might ask me to write a return statement to silence this error. I do. I will then filter um, order by um, by ID. Let's say desk uh, limit zero twenty three because I want my table to be only twenty three rows deep. So the next thing that I want to do is I need to initialize the type of object that I want to return. And that is object object. I'll call this um, back object. <coughs> back object. I'll call it. And this is going to be a new object. And we need thirty three rules for columns, right? That is um, how we initialize our object. We determine the depth times of rows and how many columns it will have. I would also like to have a counter to keep track of the rows. So I will say in counter, let's call it row counter, row count is zero. Good. The next thing I want to do is I need to take my back object and with the row count here and the first uh, column which will be the column zero will contain a get string This will contain, um, let's see what we're working on, the date, right? And that date happens to be prefixed with a T in my database. So I'll say T date. Okay. Um, I need to also increment my counter, of course. Um, Row count. 
and we see that something is not okay here. Let's see what is the problem. The backup is not well referenced somehow. This is much better. So now I can delete this statement and continue constructing my objects. So on the one we will have the type on the two on the column two we will have um, this one on the column three we have something called total so now we have constructed our object of objects and here now I can just return that object so the next thing I want to do is I want to go back to my window application and here I would like to initialize somewhere around here I would like to initialize that object so I have to instantiate queries I will call it QRS and I will say new queries and I will create an, a variable an object variable that will be object oops object variable um, let's call my obg and now I just instantiate I called the fill table methods and cast it into that object I will have to add some control declaration in case something goes wrong so now I can just replace this code here the one that initiates that object I can replace it by obj obj and that's pretty much it if I now run um, something is not okay here so let's see what is going on I need to add some it's running in and my application just pop up on top so that's pretty much how you integrate uh, you combine your SQL lights with a Java project and a swing window using the table to display data I hope it was uh, helpful thanks for watching cheers <laughs>